So I've got the circuit completed and everything soldered in place. And as you can see, the ground just follows around the outside here, connects to each LED. And then the, the positive voltage comes through this wire, through the switch, and to the resistors. And turns on. Something to keep in mind if you're using these LEDs and other projects is that they're very bright if you're looking top down, but from wider angles, they aren't as bright. So as you can see, very bright there, but as I turn it away, they don't keep their brightness at those wider angles. So it's just something to keep in mind. They do make LEDs that have wider viewing angles. So now we'll actually begin assembly of the case. So now we've got the cover on and the LEDs are poking through. And these we'll just glue in place like so. And then you can put the clear piece on top of it. And as you can see, it shines really nicely. So first we'll glue these things together. Next, we'll attach these clear pieces. Then we can add these little plunger pieces. And the way that these are laid out is on these two, they face straight down. And on this one, they're off to the side. We'll just let those sit. And we'll move on to the lid. So we'll just have to glue this together. So we've given the glue time to set, and everything seems to be looking good. Our next step is to put the thin film right here to cover this up. And that's where our scrapbook sleeve will come in handy. We'll just cut it out to about the size of this, and then glue it on the inside. That looks like it'll work perfectly. Now you have to be careful when gluing this part because if you smear it at all, it'll show up on the front and won't look very good. So 
what I do is I just take it an edge at a time. And the good thing is, is not many people are going to look at the underside. So it doesn't have to be that pretty underneath here. As long as it covers the hole, you'll be good to go. So now we've got that all glued up. And there's just a nice clear film right there. I'll let that set. And we'll put the magnets in place. And as you can see, I've got these nice circular magnets. I've got four of them here. So I put two stands that will connect to the lid. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue right here and then set the magnet in place. Do the same right here. And then I'll let that set. Now I've got these labels printed and they are ready to be attached. But make sure that when you're attaching them, to put them in the right spots because this isn't a perfect square, so the lid has to go on the specific way. And if you put them on the wrong side, you'll end up messing up your paint job. I actually made that mistake on the previous version of this project. So this label is going to go right there, and then this one will go right about there. One of the best parts about the flux capacitor is that it looks homemade in the movie, so it doesn't have to be perfect, and sometimes little mess-ups can give it a little bit of personality, too. Okay, so now all that's left to do is to glue the magnets onto the lid as well. Then our project will be complete. So for that, since the magnets are already in place, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on top of the magnet. Then I'll just simply put the lid on. Once again, make sure you have it oriented correctly. Then just let it sit. So there you have it. The flux capacitor completed with working LEDs. This is a great little project for beginners in electronics just because the circuitry is so easy. And it's a really good starting point for learning to solder. It can also be a really nice gift for a Back to the Future fan, you know. Also, it's kind of a fun project to 3D print. So there you guys have it. 3D printed flux capacitor with working LEDs. I plan to do some more 3D printing projects that involve electronics. So if there's any part of this process that you guys would like me to elaborate on, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to highlight that in my upcoming videos. If you thought this project was cool, be sure to give it a thumbs up and then subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Well, that's all for me, YouTube. But remember, if you build one of these for yourself, keep it under 88 miles per hour.